Here the context is very different. We are dealing with already established company operating within a well established market and where the key com competitors and market trends are well known. As a consequence, there is a strong shift from being innovative and obsessed with fast expansion towards efficiency. The key driver becomes how to do it better and efficiently in order to improve our profitability. That means a shift from being an agile to becoming a sort of a rigid company. And there is a shift from partly an emerging process into a pure deliberate choice from the strategy standpoint. Simply said, here we can find a pure top-down approach. As you remember, to do that most likely you are going to rely on a technostructure as a main standardization and formalization force needed to create a lot of benchmarks, rules and procedures how to optimally run a system. Yet, if you let them took over the company, meaning technocrats, most likely they will kill creativity and entrepreneurial spirit, which is another extreme. Let's explain. Key challenges. Probably the best way to describe key challenges refers to pursuing external and internal excellence or optimization. Why? As mentioned before, here we have a company that is operating within a stable and well-established equilibrium. Key players, offers and customer preferences are all very well known. All you have to do is to keep running, to slightly adjust your offer when and where needed, to find unexploited market pockets or niches and similar, and to pursue operational excellence, meaning to find a way how your operations can go even more smoothly, to, elim to eliminate all unnecessary costs and activities and similar. Core approach. First, it's very important to understand what's going on within and outside the company. Then, you create a strategy as a deliberate choice and distribute tasks throughout company for the implementation. Very different from an entrepreneurial approach which requires strategy formation and its implementation to go hand in hand, based on a lot of probing activities and adjustments on the way. Here we have few important players. Strategist, usually CEO, who creates the strategy in a nutshell. Technocrats, in this case strategy planners, who are responsible for strategy formulation and its distribution in a form of different written documents like overall strategy slide deck, budgets, timelines and similar. Implementers, midline managers and people from operations responsible for strategy execution. As you can imagine, technocrats are responsible for controlling if the strategy is properly communicated and implemented, and when and where adjustments are needed. That's why they are the key, to create a lot of useful tools and systems that everything can go smoothly, as we will see in the next section devoted to organizational systems. From the standpoint of strategy content, Many well-known tools are used, for example, Porter's five forces and pestle analysis for the general outlook and industry analysis. Porter's generic strategies, meaning cost leadership, differentiation and focus strategy. Or Porter's value chain used for operations, fine-tuning or restructurings, etc. Additionally, financial modeling plays a very important role in a long-term planning process profitability estimation of different strategic initiatives, budgeting and scheduling. Basically, that's the core tool designed to control and program the strategy implementation process. Implications on the structure As you can imagine, strategy is an output of a well-structured, formalized and programmed analytical thinking, not based on a creative impulse and need for an innovation. Emphasis is on the implementation side and running a company based on numbers. That's why machine bureaucracy is a very suitable description. Usually, this approach is extremely successful as long as you are not faced with a market disruptor. Fine-tuning works perfectly well up to this point. The organization is designed the way that kills initiative and experimentation since those are not efficient activities, while entrepreneurial spirit is against too many rules and procedures, so those kind of people just leave the company. 
most likely the company will rather choose to acquire an innovative endeavor than to tolerate a talented maverick.